Hey everyone, this is MJ. You are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk mostly fiction, friends, and fun. Today we are doing something completely opposite. We are going to talk about a very serious and needed, much needed um, nonfiction book about depression. Stay tuned. Okay, so this video is something completely off brand for my channel. Um, I'm actually going to put a trigger warning here. This book is about depression and it also talks about suicidal ideations. Um, and this may not be a book for people that are struggling with depression um, or are in that dark place. Um, this is a book for someone I would think that has recovered and or um, a friend or family member that is interested in understanding depression. Um, this book I picked up at um, my Gettysburg book haul um, two weeks ago, and this is Darkness Visible by the author William Styron. William Styron um, is a Pulitzer Prize winner. I'm going to read about the author for you. Um, he's the author of Lie Down in Darkness, The Long March, Set This House on Fire, Confessions of Nat Turner, Sophie's Choice, and This Quiet Dust. He has been awarded the Pulitzer Prize, the American Book Award, the Howells Medal, and the Edward McDowell Medal. He died in 2006. This book was published in 1990. 1990 is the original publication. I have a copy from 1992. Um... And the reason I got this, it was in, I guess it was in like a little nonfiction pile. And I'm like, I'm not really doing nonfiction November. I'm not really participating in any events, but I thought, hmm, it called to me and I picked it up. It was a dollar and I'm so glad that I read it. It is called Darkness Visible, A Memoir of Madness. Um, this is a first person account of the author's experience with um, severe depression to the point where he is thinking of, um, ending his existence. It is a honest, it is a touching, um, I actually just read over the last few pages again, and, um, it brought me to tears because <laughs> there is a hopeful ending. Okay, so legit, <clears throat> I just talked to you for like seven minutes and um, I don't know what happened to the video. It was on. I saw it was on and I have no idea what happened to the video. Somehow my phone shut off. All right, we're just going to go through this. Okay, so... um. Yeah, I got emotional at the end of the book because there is such hope. This book talks about um, William Styron. Uh, he is a Pulitzer Prize author. Um, he, it talks about his battle with severe depression. I'll read you the back. Um, in 1985, William Styron fell victim to a crippling and almost suicidal depression, the same illness that took the lives of many famous poets um, and artists. That Styron survived his descent into madness is something of a miracle. His eventual recovery with, with candor and precision makes Darkness Visible a rare feat of literature, a book that will arouse a shock of recognition, even in those readers who have been spared the suffering it describes. This book talks about his downward spiral and his contemplation with ending his existence. If you are in a state of active depression, do not read this. Um, hold off. Hold off until you are in a mood where you could step outside and read, um, if that makes sense. This book is perfect for anyone who has been affected by suicide, for anyone that has been affected by severe depression, for 
family, friends, lovers, relatives, coworkers, to get an understanding of what severe depression looks like. This is a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, I'm going to read you a little bit. In the section that mysteriously got deleted, I don't know. I don't know what happened. There's so many freaky things that happen to me sometimes. Um, I talked about growing up um, a childhood friend, my brother's, probably my brother's best friend at the time. Um, I don't know if it was his best friend because they were going to different schools. Um, but good friend. Grow, growing up together, we hung out as kids. I was the little kid that hung around my brother. Um he ended his life at a very young age. I want to say he was probably 15 or 16 and it was over a girl. It was over a relationship. Um, and it hit very, very close to home. And that was the first time that I recognized how, so, how life can be so light and beautiful and airy and it could just, someone could shut the lights off and it can go bleak and dark and sad. Um, you know, um, I'm no stranger to, uh, depression. Um, my mother had, well, she died from, um, complications of dementia. And in the early stages of dementia, I didn't understand what was happening. It wasn't until, um, I sought out support groups online, um, to get more information about, you know, what was happening and why am I taking it personally? And, I felt as if it was my fault and just all these different emotions and the stress of it all takes you down a rabbit hole, a very dark rabbit hole. And I was able to recognize that and I was able to, um, change my mindset, um, really dive into meditation, really dive into self care and that is um, what saved me, I believe, is just my self-recognition of what was going on with me. And, you know, depression doesn't know color. It doesn't know age. It doesn't know gender. It hits so many people at so many different times of life. He was, I believe he was 60 at the time um, when this was going on, I believe. Um... Okay, so I'm going to read you two passages of this. Again, if you are going through it, just shut this video off. Take a break. Um, talk to someone. Make sure that you have some type of a support system going on. Make sure that you recognize those issues within you. Um, because if you're watching this, you're meant to be here. You know? Uh, and, you know... Life is a beautiful, beautiful thing that is filled with such sadness and darkness. But it's about surviving that and coming through the end that makes it worth it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go on page seven. This is from the author, and this is a first person perspective. Um, he's telling his story about his relationship with depression. Depression is a disorder of mood, so mysteriously painful and elusive in the way it becomes known to the self, to the mediating intellect, as to verge close to beyond description. It thus remains nearly incomprehensible to those who have not experienced it in its extreme mode, although the gloom, quote, the blues, which people go through occasionally and associate with the general hassle of everyday existence are of such prevalence that they do give many individuals a hint of the illness in its catastrophic form. But at the time of which I write, I had descended far past those familiar manageable doldrums. And he goes on to talk about his experience during an awards ceremony um, when he was in Paris, when he realized that his depression was severe. Um, like I said, the book talks about hope. It talks about treatment. It talks about support systems, um, how important his wife was, his friends, how he would recognize um, uh, depressive symptoms in others. Um, he would share stories about um, people in similar fields, artists and writers and poets and um, their situations. It's a very well-written book and it is a powerful book for only being 80 pages. 
towards the last fourth of the book. Most people in the grip of depression at its ghastliest are, for whatever reason, in a state of unrealistic hopelessness, torn by, exagger by exaggerated ills and fatal threats that beat no resemblance to actuality. It may require on the part of friends, lovers, family, admirers, and almost religious devotion to persuade the sufferers of life's worth which is so often in conflict with a sense of their own worthlessness, but such devotion has prevented countless suicides. This is a fantastic book. Again, um, read this um, knowing that you are in a good state. If you've never experienced depression, if you have a loved one that suffers from depression, if you know of someone, a coworker, if someone has ended their existence and you want to have an idea as to what they may have gone through, their stories may be similar. Okay, not exact, but um, there are psychosomatic, um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, <laughs> features. There are physical features to depression as well. And he speaks to that. Um, for everyone that's participating in nonfiction November, if you are looking for something different, if you are looking for something powerful, if you are looking for something possibly to help another person, this could be it. If you are on the trend of disturbing books and you are interested in reading an extremely disturbing book because it is based on real life experience, um, this could be for you as well. I wanted to read it because I understand um, my uh, past depression. Um, I understand um, what it looks like. I understand um, how I need to take care of myself. And that's, you know, that's basically how I live. Am I a positive person all of the time? No, I'm not. I'm human. And we all have those type of moments. This book illustrates the darkest of those moments. Um, and it's very well done. Um, it ends in hope. I'll say that. Uh, and that's not a spoiler. That's just good news. So um, that's it. Okay. So I hope I didn't overwhelm you. I hope I didn't overshare. I'm just being me. It is who I am. It's a part of me. It's a part of who I am. Uh, and, you know, I, I didn't, um, I came out of it okay. Okay. So, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Again, I'm going to put information here in case you um, might need some help. And it's okay to accept help. Help is welcome. Um, the helpers are there to help people that need it. And there's no shame in seeking help. Okay, everyone. So that is it here from me. Sorry for the tears. I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable. Um, but I wanted to be as real and honest in this review as I could. And it is an important one, I think, because there are a lot of people that are suffering. Um, and there's a lot of loved ones that don't understand what's going on with them. And this book could shed some light on that. Okay. So um, that's it here for me. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video, which will be sooner rather than later. So until next time, goodbye for now.